as I was coming here, somebody asked me, so what's going to happen in 2012? <laughs> and my immediate sort of off-the-cuff response was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Which I probably should have modified to not much more than what's happening now. As soon as people hear a date, we get fixed on that date, you know, December the 21st, 2012. It's like, come that day, everything's going to happen. That's going to be the time when there's the great transformation, renewal, the collapse of everything, whatever it is, it's like it's going to be on that day. I don't think much is going to happen on that day. There may be some you know, celebrations at holy sites around the world where people are gathering to celebrate the solstice of 2012 and waiting for the end of the world to happen. I was actually looking yesterday, just out of interest, to be even more precise, when is the solstice? It's actually at 11.11, which is something that probably happens once in every 1,000, 1,500 years. The solstice is actually on that time, 11.11. So all those people who are so caught up in 11.11 are going to have a whale of a time. The solstice, the solstice of 2012 is on 11.11. <laughs> hey, couldn't be much better than that. And maybe that's just part of the wonderful cosmic choreography. I think, you know, whoever organizes this whole show is having a wonderful little laugh to itself about what's going on. Then I was thinking the actual date, you know, if you write the date out, it's 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1. It's like, nice. It's not just some random string of numbers. And I, I love that stuff. That's just being a mathematician originally. I love playing with numbers and seeing patterns in numbers. Not to read any great significance into it, except there's just there's a subtle beauty. There's a game going on there underneath, which is nice to enjoy. And there may even be people going to be sitting around at 11, waiting for 11 minutes past 11 on the 21st for the moment to happen. And so I think it's just going to pass, that moment will pass unnoticed. Or even the year. People are going to start expecting change come January the 1st of 2012. The point is, it's not about a moment in time. And this is something John was pointing to. It's about, a, it's about the times, the period of time. And John was talking about you know, the sun crossing the center of the galaxy the ecliptic, the solstice. That's, when the, that's the point when the center of the sun crosses the center of the galaxy. But from the moment the top of the sun, or the top of the sun, starts crossing the center of the galaxy and the bottom of the sun does, that's a period of about 36 years. There's a period of 36 years when the sun is crossing the center of the galaxy. And we're in that period now. If you want to be exact, that began whatever it was, 1994, and go on to 2030. So that's a sort of a period of time. Or we could make it, I mean, I, I like to think it probably appeared more like 100 years. I don't think the Mayan calendar was saying at that particular day, it ran its full circle. And as it came to an end, we're entering these times. If you take a 100-year period, I just think it's interesting to take a 100-year period, then... 50 years ago was, would have been 62, the beginning of the 60s. And I think most of us can see, particularly those of us who are alive and thriving in that time, that, that really was the beginning of a whole movement towards renewal. That was when collectively, well not collectively, totally, but a large proportion of the population in the West began to see that the old way of running society, the old politics, the old way of interacting didn't work and something new needed to happen and there was that, that vision which came in the 60s. And interestingly, I mean, psychedelics have been part of a theme here, both in terms of the indigenous cultures who saw these things and people's experiences. It, it clearly was fueled by psychedelics, the 60s. People were stepping out of their ordinary reality, tasting other realities. And if it hadn't been for that widespread use of psychedelics, maybe that vision would not have happened or it would have been much more muted. 
and probably the, I mean, the bit that always stands in my mind was 67. Those, those who lived through it, we always celebrate the summer of 67. Something, something happened then as a moment in time, or as a little period in time, which ended with the Beatles singing, All You Need Is Love, which interestingly was the first ever live global satellite broadcast, it was them recording that in the studio or re-recording it, they actually did the studio recording then they did the live recording, which I found interesting. And that's the vision. It's true, it's still true, all you need is love. If we could just live with love in our hearts as a permanent reality, 24 hours a day, we wouldn't be in this mess. If we were all living with love in our hearts, we'd be treating each other very, very differently, we'd be treating other peoples very, very differently, we'd be treating the environment totally differently. And so that was the vision, and I think in the years since then, nearly 60 years since then now, or 50 years since then, it's like, how do we do that? That's the challenge. How, how do we actually live with love in our hearts? And, and that's the spiritual journey which I want to be talking about as one of the things. What I want to do today is pull together many threads of what I see happening at this period in history. And for me, 2012 is like the epicenter 